Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at uh, Pumpkin, a pawn challenge from the recent Hack the Blue CTF by Hackbox. Uh, beginner level CTF, but you know, beginner pawn is always a tricky thing. So, you know, if you get into a set, then it's it quite tricky. Um, this is the third day, and it's still something that probably is a good introduction to um, shellcode and things, but let's go ahead and jump in. Um, we are given a binary, uh, a Docker and some files here. So we will at the end have to connect to the Docker for sure. But we're going to start locally. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. We've got just like several of the other challenges. We can they give us the Docker file. We can take a look real quick at this. Um, Alpine, super bare bones. They're going to install SoCat and they're going to connect. They're going to basically make bin sh be user bin dash. Um, they're going to install libseccomp. Um, that's interesting, and we'll come back to that in a second. They're exposing port 337. Uh, they're putting, creating a directory, and basically they're going to run the pumpkin thing directory uh, binary and expose it over this port. And then that port gets forwarded to whatever port I end up working off of. Um, libsec lib comp is an interesting one, and we'll take a quick look at that. Um, they, oops. Uh, lib sec comp. And basically, let's go down here, push description. Libsec comp provides an easy to use platform dependent interface to the kernel syscall filtering mechanism. Um, it is an API to abstract away the undercover. Blah, blah, blah. So basically, it's a way to say, specify which syscalls are allowed, a binary is allowed to make. So we're going to want to keep that in mind as we keep going. Um, I actually missed that when I originally solved the challenge. and. Uh, Took me a minute to catch up on it. So look, let's keep going though. Um, so let's let's see what else we got. We can go into the challenge directory here, and here's where we find you know flag.txt is just gonna be our dummy flag for testing. Um, let's run pumpkin. And so it says in order to proceed, we need you to whisper the secret passphrase. Um, you know, so if we say please subscribe, I doubt that's it. Let's see. Uh, you've been it's not gonna help us, but and it bolts. So uh, that's no good. We need that. Um, let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we let's see what strings can get for us. On king like this. Well, I always like to go into less. Um, so here you go. Welcome, naughty kid. Um, first of all, and so right under this, we do have the string pumpkin one pumpkin rules. Um, there's a non-zero chance that's the password. Let's give it a try. And it let us in. So we, we got the password without even doing any reverse engineering yet. Um, so it says, welcome, naughty kid. Make your wish come true. Uh, wish for everything, even the flag. So we'll say like flag, and it just crashes. Um, we can say, let's paste that again. We can say um, ls. Maybe it's the command. No, not going to work. OK. So at this point, um, it's probably time to open up Ghidra, right? So figure out what's actually going on. Um, we'll open up Ghidra here. We will create a new project, a non-shared project. Um, we will pop up here into our own pumpkin. We'll create a Ghidra directory here. We'll select that as the directory and we'll call it P-U-M-P-K-I-N-G pumpkin like that. And we will now import the file. Um just do not know how I got there. Let's see, we don't we want out of pwn pump, not pumpkin sand. Pwn pumpkin. Uh Challenge pumpkin. Okay, we accept it as an elf. We let it process. It looks good. We drag it into the code window. All right, so it opens up and it's going to ask us to analyze it. We'll say yes. And we will say uh, accept the default there. That's fine. Takes a second. Okay, it looks like it's about done. Um, so under functions, um, one thing we could do is look, we could go and look for that string. Um, also, for something like this, we can probably just start with the main function. Um, so let's take a look at what goes on here. Um, it calls setup. We can come back to that in a bit. Um, it writes out our first thing. It reads in, um, rename this to like pass phrase. Then it says, well, true. Um, checking pass phrase here. Um, what is it doing here? String length. Passphrase. If it's less than look than negative one, if it fails to read that, then fine. Then it's going to replace. Okay, so it's replacing any new line with a null character. Um, 
and then sort of in a loop, it's eventually going to come down here to a string comparison. Um, and basically, if our password matches, there's pumpkin rules, so not that hard to get this way as well. Um, if it matches, it's going to call this king function. Otherwise, it's going to write not, not, not going to bother. Um, so let's check out the king function. All right, so this says, you know, prints the right, and then it sets a bunch of these variables to zero, and then it's going to read to A8. So it's going to read to the top of this buffer right here, up to OX95 bytes, and then it's going to call that. So it's going to actually just execute that. Um, so effectively what we're doing here is it, we need to pass some shell code, and uh, we should be able to get shell code to run. Okay, so let's take a look here, and we will vim flag that pi uh, user bin env python three from pwn import star, and let's take a look. So um, it's always useful in pwn tools to update your context. So we can say context dot update arch equals um, amd sixty four. Um, if I was going to work straight up a binary, I'd actually open up that binary, but I'm not going to bother with that for now. I'm just going to update the global context here. Um, now we can say like shell code is equal to, and we're going to use the shell craft bit of Pwn tools. And this is simple because we can actually just do shellcraft.linux.sh and that'll create shell code for us that does what we want it to do out of here. Uh, but that's again where I want the context to be updated correctly. Now we can say r equals process pumpkin and we will r uh, read until let's see we better run this okay so we want this right until it says kids like that let's see where am i here okay like that that's not what i wanted so bytes um kids space like that and then we will r dot send line and we'll have a bytes and what are we going to send we're going to send pumpkin rules do i still have that yeah we do so now we will r dot read until and this time we're going to read up until this um so it'll be like that now this is where we want to send our shell code um i'm actually going to just for a second to demonstrate and we'll comment all this out and say let's see let's see what let's see what sc looks like right now so if we run this python flag oops maybe i'm not, maybe i'm in the wrong directory here python flag that pi so if we run this it's actually going to show us the shell code so it's going to eventually call exec ve on bin sh um, with that argument vector and this is just all of the things setting that up um I don't actually need that. What I really want is so if we do um, make that into assembly. Now we'll see. Here's the here's the byte string that is that shell code, and that's what I want. So let's come down here, and we can let's see. Actually, we'll do um, let's just to be nice. We'll do info shell code, so we can see what our shell code is. Then we will set up our process like this. And then we'll do r dot send, and our shell code is going to be um, so we'll do asm. Oops, not asm shell code like that. And then we can do r dot interactive, and see what we get. Okay, so we run this. Oh, pumpkin does not exist. Okay, so we need to run. Um, let's see, let's exit this. Um, move flag dot pi into challenge there it is p challenge p challenge then that and okay so now we can come back here and try it again okay so um we we have this we try to we run the shell code we start the process or we start the process we switch to interactive mode and we get an end of file while going interactive it didn't work um so let's go back in you know you could say oh did i mess up my shell code but like this is the Pwn Tools created shell code, so it's probably not a problem here. I don't know what killer is that. Um, so let's go back up. The thing we did not look at that we should is what, you know, we saw the lib, lib comp sec or sec comp. Um, let's check the setup function here. And this is where it's using sec comp. So this right here is setting a series of rules that shows what syscalls are allowed to run. And you'll notice 
um, if we look back at the main function here, it's using the write and read directly. It's not using um, your standard like printf or uh, get, you know gets kind of things. Um, so that's probably because of these limited syscalls. Um, there's a really neat utility. Let's see if I can find the. Um... Oh, so yeah. So here's you know if we have this, we see we can do um, sec comp um, tools. I believe it's called. Yeah, this is good. So uh, I installed this with um, gem install set comp tools. And, you know, as long as you have Ruby installed on your system, that should work just fine. Um, and then you can come here and we can say set comp tools dump, and we can do pumpkin. What this is going to give us is it's actually the same set of rules that we get in setup right here. Um, but it's made more clear so we can actually read it. And so we're going to start off with A being the architecture. If it's not 64-bit, it's going to go to 11, which is kill the process. Um, then we're going to say A equals the syscall number. If it's less than four, you know, four whatever, go down, jump down here. Otherwise, check and see if it's not negative one die. Um, not sure why we're protecting negative one, but sure. So now we have the, the real meat of it. If it's read, go to 10, which is allow. If it's write, go to 10, which is allow. If it's sig return, go to 10, which is allow. Um, if it's exit, go to 10, which is allow. And if it's not open at, go to 11. So basically, we're allowed to run read, write, exit, and open at are the useful ones. So we can only use those or it's going to get killed. So let's come back up in here and we're going to change our shell code around. Um, we'll delete that and we'll say uh, sc equals shellcraft dot Linux. And now we can only use, we can't use the open, we can only use open at. And that's, that's one I'm not as familiar with. So we'll do pwn tools, shellcraft, open at. Let's see, here's one for, I saw open at in there. Open at. Okay, so it invokes the open at syscall. Um, see man to open at for information. Um, let's see, man open at. Check this out. And so if we look in here, it's going to start for with a directory and a path name and flags. If we look down here a little bit, it says if the path, we really want this, um, if the path name is relative and the dir fd is a special value at fdcwd, then the path name is relative to the current working directory. And that's really what we want. We don't actually know the directory right now. Um, I guess we could go look it up in the Docker file perhaps, but we can just use this, um, this constant. Now we have to figure out what this is. So let's Google for this. Um, and we can come down here and say, here we go. This looks promising. Um, and here it is right here. It's defined as negative 100 as a special value. To that. So uh, we can come up here and we can say, go, we'll say um, f, let's say at underscore fd bwd equals negative 100. And if we're going to be nice and organized, we will put this in a comment. Um, then we can say shellcraft Linux dot open at, and we can say at FD CWD. Oops, fix that. Now we need to, where, what do we want to open? We want to open flag dot text and we uh, flags. We'll just go with zero for now. Uh, so now we can say S key SC plus equals shellcraft dot Linux dot read. Um, now read is going to take the handle that came, the, the handle to the file we want to read. Well, we already opened it and the return value from a syscall is going to be in RAX. So we're going to put RAX here for the handle that we're going to read. Where do we want to write it? Let's just write it onto the stack. We'll put it on RSP, the top of the stack. Um, and then how much do we want to read? Uh, totally arbitrary. It's got to be enough to get the whole flag. I'm going to do 223 for OXDF. Um, and we'll do SC plus equals shellcraft Linux dot write. Now, where do we want to write to? We want to write the standard out. So we want to go one. Um, what do we want to write? Well, RSP. And how much do we want to write? We want to write, we could just do 223, but we might get a bunch of extra stuff. So what we really want is however much we just read. And so whatever we just read will be stored as the return value of the read syscall. So we can now say RAX here. And now if we want to be like nice and clean about it, we can say shellcraft.linux.exit and give it like a zero. Um, and I think that's looking pretty good. Um, 
the other thing we can do if we want to just make this clean this up a little bit is we can come down here. It's going to send that. So now we're going to do r dot read until, and then we're going to read basically until we get to hack the box squiggly, and then we can do a success. Um, now we have to do we have to actually we this hack the box squiggly won't be included here. So we'll say uh, hack the box squiggly plus r dot receive r e c v. Uh, 223, why not? Dot decode like that. So that should print us the flag. If it works, let's give it a try. Okay, awesome. So we got, just to see what we did, um, we got all our shell code. It shows us our, our assembly language here. Um, if we go down, it's going to do the various different calls. Now it's going to start the local process. Um, it's complaining to me that bytes, text is not bytes, assuming ASCII, no guarantees. Where well, let's, let's the, the small OCD part of me wants to fix this. Let's see. Um, oh, we need to read until this right here. That's got to be bytes. Uh, so let's try that again. Cool. So we start the process, and the process exits, but we're able to read the buffer off that and get the fake flag. So now we, all we need to do is change this to make it remote. Um, so what we can do here is we can say, um, let's do import sys. We can do um, if len sys.argv is greater than one, we'll do ip equals uh, sys.argv two. We'll do port equals int sys.argv three. And then we will do r equals uh, remote ip comma port like that. Else, and this is where we will do grab our process here. Push dd to delete the line, and then p to paste it back in, and we'll space it in. So there we go. So we should have the same thing. If we run this now, it's still get us the flag. Um, now, if I come over here and grab my Docker instance. And if I paste that in and replace that, um, ooh, we missed something here. Um, so zero, one, and two, I just missed the numbers. So uh, this is a one, this is a two, and we got the flag. So pretty neat little challenge. Um, a good introduction to crafting specific shell code and sort of specifically we highlight some of the real places that Pwn Tools makes us strong for us. There's nothing that says we couldn't um, generate this on our own. I mean, literally, we can see, you know, and it's a good exercise if you've never done it to go through and try to write assembly that will do um, these kinds of things. Um, so, you know, for example, it has to push flag.txt onto the um, onto the stack, and then it has to eventually get the, get the various arguments in place, and it calls open at um, with the syscall right here by getting the syscall set to the right thing. Um, anyway, it's not a bad exercise, but man, Pwn Tools makes it so much easier. So um, thanks for sticking around with me. I will talk to you next time. Bye.